welcome and thanks for joining us for our first episode in our series uh, for helping small business. Uh, we're sifting through a lot of white noise at the moment, so this series is designed to help you, the small business person, uh, within our area. Uh, we, we've been co combining our efforts with uh, the other chambers. Um, we want to share the love uh, around to assist businesses throughout the Hunter, which gives me the opportunity to uh, introduce Sue Gilroy, our president of the Singleton Chamber. Hi, Sue. Hi, thank Hi. you, Judy, uh, and welcome, everybody. Um, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you, Judy, and thank you, Mel. Um, this is a great opportunity for collaboration, as all chambers are across the country, I'm sure, at the moment. We're trying to do the best we can for our small business, um, and this is a fantastic opportunity with this series of uh, webinars that will help you navigate the, the uh, plethora of information out there. So thank you again for having me along. Look forward to being part of this and look forward to our presentations. Thank you. That's wonderful. As Sue was saying, we have many episodes to follow. We have HR, mental health, accounting, uh, marketing and education. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Mal Power. She is one our facilitator who is going to assist us through this and uh, welcome aboard Mel. Thanks Judy and Sue so much for the welcome and as I said yesterday I do have my coffee. <laughs> it's great to be here and I'm really excited to uh, over the next couple of weeks share some you know great stuff from some guests that we've got that are local people from here in Maitland and um, I really want to thank the chamber for uh, jumping on board there's been a lot of people that have done things in like super hustle this week uh, to make this series happen so uh, how the how things are going to work today uh, we've got some great guests we've got Louise Lennox from Dynamize come on in Louise turn your video on Deb Mirish from Biz Synergy turn your video on come on in um, these beautiful Four ladies are working like 14 hour days right now. How are you both going? Hey, uh, <laughs> great. Great, we're um, keeping busy. So at least there's not too much time to think about things. Just, yeah, keeping busy. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's been, it's been a lot going on in the last sort of 10 to 14 days. And um, Louise, you're an accountant in, in Maitland. Yeah, yes. and, and Deb, your bookkeeping in Maitland. Yes, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Great. yeah. So tell me about your last week. What has been what has it been like for you as accountants and bookkeepers with what's going on? Well the last fortnight really, since I rewinding back to last Monday, that was a pivotal day for me. Like it was a day when hospitality industry was almost shut down and for me that had me in a a spin of overwhelmness um, about not only the over 130 plus clients we we have their businesses wow. but our businesses and um, I mentally struggled that day but since then I've been finding a strange sort of calmness and um, which we need to be there for our clients and for our team. Yeah, yeah. Big busy times and a lot, you know, a lot to take on board, especially um, as people in the financial profession. I mean, there's, you know, there's a lot weighing on both of your shoulders with supporting your clients and not only just your clients, but other people out there um, that are in, you know, needing support as well. What about you, Louise? How has the last week and 10 days been for you? Um, I think it's been a bit of a blur. I think at Lunchtime last Friday, I think I was up to 148 phone calls, I think. So that was just checking in with uh, clients, with bookkeepers of clients, uh, um, regular contact with Deb and her team at Biz and uh, for our mutual clients and just um, just keeping everybody updated. Um, yeah, it's um, it was a crazy week and uh, well worth that glass of wine on Friday night. <laughs> Yeah, I think we all deserve a glass of wine at the moment. That might be later today for me. <laughs> yes. I've got some amazing boys at the moment that are, that are home from uni and they come in at four o'clock and say, Mum, it's happy hour and we're cooking dinner for you. So Nice. <laughs> oh, very good. Hashtag ISO is actually not going too bad. They're, they're doing okay. Um, very good. So... One thing I wanted to ask both of you and get your points of view on as, as financial advisors in Maitland, and you're, you're essentially on the coalface 
of what's going on. What do you see as some of the biggest challenges that small business owners are actually facing right now in Maitland and, and the Hunter? Well, firstly, significant drops in income for some industries in particular. Um, the uncertainty, uncertainty and um, they're frightened, they're depleted, um, not knowing what to do and cash flow. Cash flow is a big, um, big issue because there's all these things on offer, but there's so much happening in the background to get those things in place that there's a lag before they, they crystallise. So um, it's just that initial cash flow issue mm. and and okay. also knowing getting the right information is a big issue at the moment there's a lot of information floating around that isn't isn't right and there's still a lot that's not clear what about you louise yeah i think um lots of phone calls we regarding what what's available out there this this and it's changing every day. Even the fact sheets that we're getting from the government, they can change within hours. So trying to keep on top of that to let clients know is um, a big challenge. And them yeah, listening to everybody and um, not knowing exactly what they're um, eligible for is massive. But And some people have lost 100% of their income overnight. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, where they've had to close. I think also another big concern for some businesses is is keeping their team together, their skilled their skilled workforce together that they've they've trained, they've built up relationships with, and the recent announcement around the job keeper payment I can see is going to go a long way to help businesses keep that team together. And I'm really grateful that that initiative's come out. Yeah, it's not just the small business owners. Like it's it, the, the on-flow effect from that is, you know, it affects their families and the employees and the teams that I don't know a lot of small business owners don't think of their people as employees. They see them as, you know, their team family. and their, their family. family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what do you see as some of the key things that um, people that are in a situation of hardship or distress or confused about wanting to know what their next move is? is what are some of the steps that you could say to them this is where you need to get the information or what do you need to do to get that help their advisors they need to reach out to their their financial advisors their accountants their bookkeepers and, and we're all working together we all have to work together in this i think you need to reach out to the people that know the rules around these because um you know if you don't you know you could be making some decisions that just aren't based on on the true source of information. So I, I think definitely, you know, you need us, you need your advisors more than ever now because you need to keep your compliance lodgements up to date, your figures up to date, so that when these things come to fruition to be actually able to claim, you're in the in the box seat to be able to do so. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts, Louise? Um, exactly. Um, I think exactly what Deb said. Um, Karen on Facebook um, may be getting her information from anywhere <laughs> um, where um, hopefully all the uh, advisors and uh, all us accountants and bookkeepers, we're actually keeping up to date. We're only mm. using the government websites for, our, for sourcing our information. Uh, so, you know, we're only going to tell clients facts with, and yeah. um, that's the big thing, I think. The, mm. uh, there's so many myths out there mm. that, um, yeah, they need to and, keep up to date. And there's so much yeah. that's unclear still. Even for us, there's so much um, that there's not clarity around um, that we really need to be patient. We need to talk to our advisors and be patient till the, the actual information comes out so that it can be applied to your situation. And because your situation will be totally different to Bob's down the road or Susie around the corner, um, just connect with yeah. your advisors. Yes. Thank you both. And, and for anyone that's tuning in today, look, if you're a small business owner, you're in trouble or you don't have an accountant or bookkeeper or you're worried about financial resources to access that advice, what I can say to you is we've got a, a great community of advisors here in the Maitland and wider Hunter area. Please connect with your local chamber, comment below, and we will connect you with somebody that can help. So this is absolutely the time that as a community that we're all going to band together to support our economy moving forward. And, and everybody is doing their little piece to actually support, uh, you know, 
exactly what we're doing in, in not only just Maitland, but, you know, we've also got Sue from Singleton and Cessnock and the wider hunter areas. So, you know, um, I guess the big thing is for, you know, the stimulus package, it's, it's, there's a lot out there and there's a, a lot to navigate. Are there any particular things that either of you have that you think is, you know, particularly important that will be relevant to businesses right now, something that's really jumped out at you that people need to be across? Well, the first thing, first and foremost, I guess, is um, well, two things. Their March FAS. Their March FAS is pivotal to accessing the cash boost for pays go withholding. So getting that FAS done and giving your advisors time to get those done um, because obviously everyone's going to be wanting them done fast. Yep. <laughs> um, but um, you will get a credit if you're entitled to it. Um, and also, I guess, for the job keeper is connect with your advisor and lodge your expression of interest if you feel that you're going to have the revenue drop um, so that when the application comes out, you can access it. Yeah. What about you, Louise? Yeah, I think um, with the, you need to have a look at your cash flow, where it's going to go. You need to have a plan. And... Um, whether you will keep it an accountant, they can look at that March base and do the tax planning that we may usually do in May. Um, we need to bring that forward and we probably needed to do it a couple of times between now and 30th of June just to see where each business is. We can adjust the pay as you go instalments on, on the BAS as well as um, as well as your pay as you go withholding. Um, credit, you can also get a credit on the pay as you go instalments if your income is going to significantly drop. Um, so there are options out there, but you, you need to have all your accounts up to date for us to be able to do that correctly. Okay. So for any tax planning, um, it, yeah, all your accounts need to be up to date. You need to get all the information to your advisors. So, um, so that planning is right because you don't want to debt um, 12 months down the track either. Yeah. Deb, on that note, that's some really great points there, Louise. Uh, and I want to just drill down a little bit more into what you talked about there about getting the financial information up to date. Deb, have you got any tips for small business owners that may not be up to date on things that they would immediately need to look at uh, to um, get up to date? Well, reach out, reach out to their advisors to help them get up to date. Um, there are great pieces of software out there and things that there's ways we can do that rather quick, you know, quickly. Okay. Um, um, so I just need to reach out and get help. You know, you can't bury your head in the sand with this because, you know, you're going to fall too far behind and, and you know, you won't survive till the other, the other side of this disaster. Yeah. Um, I think just put your hand up. It's not, it's not, um, no one's going to judge you for falling behind. Um, yeah. We're all here to help. And, and I keep saying to my team, we're all in this together. The, the accountant, the bookkeeper, the, the business owner, the employees, it can't all fall on the business. It has to be shared um, by the community, the wider community. So um, just reach out. That's great. That's, that, that's great advice. Um, actually, I'm just going to address a question. We've had one of the comments. Um, Kat has made a comment um, uh, just on, on the live feed here. Kat's just said he her bookkeeper hasn't made contact. Look, Kat, um, we'll reach out to you after the session today and, and see what we can do to help. So I'll send you a note afterwards to, to, to check in with you. Um, one of the other things that I, I wanted to ask you ladies is that I've seen a lot of businesses being incredibly creative and mm -hmm. making massive overnight pivots. Yes. What, what have you seen and what's, what's really amazed you um, in this process of we've seen this unfold? That's been one of my, one of the positives out of this. I've seen businesses create income streams that they didn't have before that they'll now have after the fact. You know, online ordering apps, online stores, um, different products. It's been, it's been really fun to watch. That's been an enjoyable thing out of this whole mess um, to see. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. What about you, Lou? What have you noticed? Exactly what Debbie said. And also the, um, the sense of community. So people are sharing other people's um, 
business posts on Facebook and um, everyone's helping everybody, which I think is great. Um, but I think in a time like this, the, the people that can diversify and do diversify, they're going to come out, the, out on the other end of this so much stronger. Um, That's right. Yeah, and there's a lot of positives. There's a lot of positives. And people that may not have worked at home before, we can see that it can be done. So there's that flexibility for team members in some cases as well. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's amazing. I think everyone's learning how to Zoom, Zoom mm. super quickly. Yeah. Um, thank goodness for Zoom. The other thing I wanted to check in with you both about is the, the concept of planning and you know, I know that some business owners are really across this, but there are some that, that maybe aren't as much. I think it actually gets down to personality too. Some of us are planners and some of us are, mm. you know, not. Um, what are your suggestions for actually putting, you know, a plan in place? Does it need to be 30 days or 90 days? Or what are your thoughts on that right now? We're seeing um, most planning happening across six months, like across mm -hmm. what we keep getting this six-month time Brain keeps getting mentioned. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, we're still looking at six months. Yeah. Mm. That's sound advice, Deb. Sound advice. What are your thoughts, Louise? Yeah, at, at least up to the September buzz because that's when the last of the cash flow cash. boost will come through. So, um, so which is basically, yeah, the six months to the September buzz. Um, but, yeah, as Deb said, the, this next six months, so this is when you've really got to drill down on the expenses and cut costs where you can approach your landlord if you need to. Yeah. Um, but those that can still pay their bills, they should, because that money is going into the economy. Mm. So yeah. if you've got the, if you've still got the income, haven't lost your income, you know, you need to be paying, those, especially the local creditors. Um, put the bank on hold if you need to, but pay your local creditors, um, yeah. you know, Agreed. because they're the ones that, are, that need to be there at the end of this. Yeah. So um, are you saying that it's always good to, you know, have that conversation and, and, and talk to people and, and enter into a negotiation about where you're at with things? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah. yeah. Communication is key here. <laughs> I mean, you know, this is totally unprecedented. What we did last week to run our businesses isn't necessarily what we need to do this week. No. Mm. no. So one last thing I, I want to check in with you is you talk about, you know, expens expenditure. Again, some of us are really good at budgeting, but, <laughs> but, you know, some of us aren't. Have you got any tips on how people can actually start to create a budget? Not necessarily just for business, but maybe also a personal aspect of things as well. An, e an easy way to start is by having your figures up to date to be able to look at what you have spent in the past and export that from your financial software and then build a projection from there based on your history and tone and, and adjust it as you can as you have those negotiations with your suppliers. Yeah, awesome. Louise, any ideas and tips on, on budgeting? Yeah, uh, because of the software that's available now, it's it's a lot easier to drill down into a separate into each expense mm -hmm. and really have a look at what's necessary. Like if there's software subscriptions that you haven't used in a year, you know, get rid of it or put or yeah. at least put it on hold. Um, and yeah, just the little bits and pieces. I think um, some money is being saved naturally because we can't go out for coffee or can't have that business yeah. lunch. Um, things like that, but um, but a lot of software that you think, oh, you know, month in, month out, when you see the direct debit, you kind of think, oh, I must cancel that and never get around to it. Now's the time to actually contact them and put it on hold or get it cancelled, depending yeah. on what it is. Yeah. I think also something we haven't mentioned, Mel, um, that I forgot to bring out before, is keeping visible online. You know, if you aren't able to trade as in the fashion you were before, you really need to keep yourself visible online. And if you're finding yourself with extra time because you have had a downtime, use that um, to stay active online and to have time to sit and think about different ways you can approach different things. So if you're looking for how to go online, just follow Deb Mirish from Biz Synergy. <laughs> <laughs> She's the queen of online. Oh, <laughs> love you <laughs> uh, we're actually going to have some great local Maitland marketers uh, in, in a couple of sessions awesome. to talk about that. 
Uh, and you are so right. It is, it is important. And if you haven't done it before, then now's the time to learn. So, mm. and I know we always talk about being online as just being hashtag human, right? I mean, people yep. want to do business with people. That's, that's exactly and that's right. what our My Maitland community is. So ladies, I really want to say thank you so much. You're both doing 14, 15 hour days at the moment for actually taking the time to come and give of your energy, your expertise, and also your commitment to our community today. Thank you so much. And at this point, I'd love to open up uh, for questions. Uh, if we've got any questions that have come through, uh, we've got our beautiful Kate uh, from the chamber who's just the behind the scenes whiz. She is all over helping us do this. So uh, if there's any questions coming through, uh, just pop them on the live feed. Kate, if there's anything up there, just pop them in my chat box and we'll bring them up. Um, if there's not, then that's okay too. You can always come back, post the live, post a question. Uh, we're all in the community. So, you know, might even get Louise or Deb or myself respond. We've also got a couple of other great accountants. We've got uh, Andrew Burl. We've got Joe Trelfo. Uh, we've got some great, we've got Gavin and Rebecca Bottrell. We've got a lot of great accountants um, in, in the community that are there to support if you've got questions. So, um, I think that's it for now. Um, Judy, would you like to come um, back on if you're still around in and, and close off the session with a few final words? Hi, Jude. Oh, hi, guys. Uh, thank you so much uh, for talking to um, our members and non-members who are watching today, guys. It's, it's completely appreciated. It's a minefield out there at the moment for a lot of people. And, and we just need to know that that hand is extended and, and you guys have presented it so beautifully. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm hoping You're everybody very welcome. will join our, our next series, uh, which we're looking forward to producing for next week. And, and thank you once again, ladies. Uh, a a marvellous presentation. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. And LJ's just made a comment on the stream. Thanks, LJ. Thanks for popping in. We will see you next week. Watch the group uh, for updates uh, on things. Ladies, stay safe. Uh, and, uh, oh, actually, we do have one final question. You guys write books for one question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've got one come through. Um, so the question is, what are your thoughts on how small business will fund JobKeeper until the government starts mm. to pay in May? Yes, you look great, guys. Yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> the thought on that is um, you need to reach out to your banks. Um, that's been the, the directive on that. Um, and this, there is a lag on the JobKeeper payment. It doesn't start till the 1st of May. And so what we're saying to our clients is do not start paying that unless you're, one, absolutely sure that you're eligible. And there's an application form yet to come out to actually apply to prove that, one, you're, el you, you're eligible, but also your employees are eligible. Uh, and until you know that with certainty, don't pay it out. Um, and then if you are certain that you can claim it and start to pay it out and you don't have the cash flow, you need to reach out to your bank in the interim. The unsecured loans, 50% uh, guaranteed unsecured loans, will start to hit the deck in the next, you know, hopefully, week or two. Um, you need to start conversations with your bank sooner than later if you think you're going to be eligible for those. Great advice. Thanks, Deb. Louise, have you got anything you wanted to add to that? No, it's yeah, it's a hard one and I think uh, a lot of businesses are going, going to struggle, but hopefully the banks will step up to the plate. It's, um, yeah, a real, uh, that month lag um, when businesses have lost 100% of their income, it's going, going to be hard to do that, but um, it's communication with all part like with your employees and with the banks and we'll know more next Thursday I think the government are meeting to um, to table this and hopefully and get it ratified so hopefully we'll know more it'd be nice to know more before then but at least after that I think we'll know more and there's a good reason for the lag too because the government has to get this up and running Yep. The applications have to happen, but also the rules around it are the employee has to pay the employee the amount, then claim it back from the government. Well, then the government will pay back. So there, there will be a proof mechanism through single touch payroll and monthly income reporting to the ATO. Um, so it's, it's, there is good reason for the lag. It's just businesses having to fund it in the meantime. 
Yeah. Thank you both so much. So for any yeah. of you that are feeling confused about this, it is confusing. There's so much information coming out. Uh, look, if you do need help and support, please comment on here, uh, email the chamber. We will connect you uh, for uh, any help you need. Also jump onto our um, business chamber website. There are stimulus package links there for you to go straight to the source uh, to get the right information. Um, so thank you all so much uh, for tuning in today and we're going to see you next week. Bye for now. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye.